I only have one question to start this with, and um, it's a little bit based on something you did with Disco before, and it, it was a concept of Print Island. And it was several years several years ago that you put on a presentation, you know, getting off Print Island. Has anything changed since then? Well, um, I guess in order to answer that question, I should give you the background to the reason that I did that presentation in the first place. And, and um, uh, for those of you that don't know, um, I have I have no background in the print industry whatsoever, other than as a user and as a, and as a, a fan, um, and got involved in several projects around personalization and digital printing in around about 2014, 2015, the Coca-Cola Share of Coke project being the largest of those. Um, and that sort of uh, largely uh, ridiculously elevated me into some kind of expert, which I, which I think is hilarious. Um, but uh, either way, I was quite happy to, to pretend to be um, and found myself speaking at various print events, um, not only in the UK, across Europe and, and ultimately in the States. And in fact, the first time I spoke in the States was in uh, Phoenix um, when uh, at D-Scoop. So, so that was what, 2016, 17, Chris, I think, uh, around that time. Um, and what struck me as I spent more and more time at print events was how Without without sounding awful, because I you know there's a, there's a lot of lovely people in the print industry and a lot of intelligent people in the print industry, but they were very much stuck inside the print industry and weren't necessarily looking outside the print industry, and 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 a lot of self congratulations aren't you know aren't, aren't we great and 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 that's fine you know they're not the only industry to do that you know the automotive industry was a, was a big big um, sufferer of that insular behaviour and I wanted to come up with a presentation that largely sort of poked poked the wasp's nest a little bit to say look. You know, this is great. This is lovely. You've built this fantastic industry, but everybody outside goes, I don't know what they're talking about. And but the problem was everybody outside was the customer. Um, and and in a world that was changing at such a rapid pace, if you're not careful, you're congratulating yourself as your industry slides away into obscurity. And and it shouldn't do that because I'm a big print fan. So I came up with this notion of the adventures on Print Island, and it was all about trying to draw a gentle metaphor between the problem and the solution and using geography as that uh, point. So all the points, I had a friend of mine draw this up, a great graphic designer, nearly as good as Chris. Um, and uh, they drew up the, the map of the island and all the reference points on the island were print industry references. And we had, uh, I think we had HP Bay and we had... Um, uh, uh, you know the Cannon Mountains and and Xerox Town and all yeah so it was just largely a little bit tongue in cheek um, of a way of describing the industry as an island, but the point was that everybody that lived on the island had never left it, and in order for the island to grow, they needed to build a boat, build a raft, sail to different islands, and explain to those people that live in other areas, other industries, other worlds exactly what it is that they were busy congratulating themselves about. So the adventures on Print Island. <laughs> long answer, sorry, was largely uh, a metaphor for there's a world that way as well, you know. One thing I love about that metaphor, Richard, is you kind of have to zoom out to realize you're even on the island. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, like to, to realize you're even in this insular world, it, it takes a little, a little bit of self-reflection and, and zooming out. I wonder how much of that is being done now. Um, sort of back to Chris's question, do you think that there's any change in is print island smaller or bigger than it was three years ago four years yeah that's ago. a really good question and, and 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 you'd like to think i mean the ideal answer to that darren is that you would like to think that the the period of time that we are all just going through our little enforced gap year that we're that we are um all being thrown into or have all been thrown into affords us at the very least a little bit of introspection a little bit of time to consider you know the, the time that you don't normally have and you know and i've run my own businesses over the years mainly in the drinks business. So I, I know that when you're running fast, it's not it's not that easy to stop and go, am I running in the right direction or should I just keep running? Um, so you would like to think that this last 12, 14, 15 months has given business owners the time to go, is there another way? Um, so my optimistic self says, yes, I think there is a, an opportunity for them to have done that. Your question was, do you think they have? I suspect some have. Um, I suspect some didn't even know they needed to. I see a lot of people that are thankfully moving 
onto social media and connecting. And because of the last year being forced to do that, because that's the only way to network. But I find them um, interacting in social media like they're still within Print Island, which is one of the reasons I still brought up the that that metaphor, because the a lot of the posts, you know, they're following a lot of the popular things that are happening now, you know, write something about the print industry and then tag a bunch of people from the print industry. And, and it because we're creating all these insular conversations about print with other printers. Uh, and that's on social where I think they're really trying to use social to connect with new customers, but little do they know with the algorithms and everything else that's going on with LinkedIn, they're creating a smaller print island <laughs> by doing that. You know, they're talking to fewer and fewer people and they just happen to be in print. So I, I don't know if there's a question in there, but are you, are you, are you, are you seeing the same thing? Um, I, yeah. And, and, I, and I think what you're describing, Chris, is a degree of, of institutionalized behavior from a from a you know a generation to you know my generation I'm I'm the grand old age of fifty four and the one above me and possibly the one below me um, who who haven't necessarily recognised the need uh, or the urgency to change now they they've done it partially because as you rightly say they're using social media but they're not using it they're, they think they're using it for the right reasons but they're not actually using it for the right reasons they're using it for industry validation. Um, and that's the same as Print Island and, and, and the pack on the back. And, and this is where I think, um, you know, I'm, I'm sure we'll go on to talk about events across the industry. And I'm, and I'm being very cautious not to try and bite the hand that feeds me. But I've, I've always prided myself on my opinion is completely non-vested. I've never worked in the print industry. I have no uh, uh, financial uh, benefit from the print industry. But I, what I see is a, is a bunch of really good guys, really clever guys, that have got an awful lot to offer, but don't quite know how to offer it because they've never had to before. And that's what I mean by institutionalized. They've become trapped in a way of being and they've embraced a little bit of the new stuff, social media. Oh, we, we better put a post out. But but actually, let, as you say, let's tag in the people that we know. Well, then it hasn't it hasn't gone anywhere. You know, the audience for social media is misunderstood. I think people largely think if I put a post on Twitter, everybody in the world is going to see it. Um, you know, and therefore I've done my marketing. Well, it, as we all know, it doesn't really work like that. And, and, and as you say, out the algorithms almost then convince you that you are, you've created that world because they feed it back to you, the algorithms, uh, algorithms. Um, and you think that's the world. Well, it isn't. It's, it's, you know, uh, in Mr. Zuckerberg and, and his, and his friends. And that's, and that's fine. It's fine if you understand that that's what's happening. If you don't understand that's what's happening, you think you are playing in 2021. And the reality is you're playing in around about 2013 um, and, and nothing's really changed. You know, I had a conversation yesterday with a guy um, and he said, uh, oh, you know, well, we should, uh, you, you, I can't remember what we were talking about, not being disturbed in video calls. He said, oh, well, you should just put a sign on the door saying I'm, I'm in a Skype. And I went, which century are you living in? And when was the last time you used Skype? You know, so, so the speed that we are all proliferating at and the world is proliferating at um, is, is, is such that conservative, slow-moving, unlikely and unwilling to change industries. And I'm not just talking about print here. As I said, I talked about auto automotive before. Um, don't even know that they have to change. You know, we, we have a solution for a problem that they don't know they've got. But there is this, uh, I, I feel like there is this hope in some of the content that you've produced. And that, that funny print is dead, inkish video comes to mind, where you start, you, where you start by saying that print's buried and smells, and obviously it's tongue-in-cheek. Um, that there is this opportunity to tell a new story in, a, in an industry that seems as old as time, you know? Um, and I'm wondering if you still feel that way, if, if, you, if you feel sort of jazzed about the idea that there is this gap between what is being told and what could be told uh, to, to get new, new blood in the industry, you know, et cetera. Um, do you feel still you do you feel bullish about print's opportunity? Am I still jazzed about the the opportunity for the print industry? More so, 
Um, uh, but but uh, what I haven't had chance to do, I guess, like none of us have had chance to do, is road test that in the real world. Um, you know, we've all we've all drifted off into this virtual world for the last fifteen months, and there hasn't really yet been an opportunity to road test that with other real human beings. Um, uh, you know, in in the in the brave new world that we now find ourselves in. But I think to a certain extent, I mean, my role as I see it, Darren, and I've always said this, and I've been very honest about this, is to be a protagonist. Not, you know, I'm not. I have no depth of knowledge of of the issues and and uh, the financial constraints and the development costs and all of those kind of things about about bringing new things forward. And yet, as a layman, what I see and hear at events, and Chris and I have talked about this before over long drunken nights in various restaurants around Europe, <laughs> that the innovation and the invention in the print industry is, is, is hard to beat. It's hard to match. But it's all based around an inward view of Almost a justification, I guess, of the investment in the big pieces of metal that that that, that, that printers so love to buy, um, rather than what the customer thinks. And I and I've said for years that I think that the first thing you should do at any print event is let the public in, because the public will tell you what they want and then develop that. Because you know businesses only grow, businesses and 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 uh, uh, evolve if they're aware of what their customers want from them. If they're only aware of what they want from themselves, then it's a very limited. Opportunity. So I am, I am just as enthusiastic, enthusiastic, if not more so than I've ever been, because it, the problem, it's still there. It's still there to be done. It's not like, well, we did that and it kind of worked. What's next? Well, we still need to do this bit first. And I don't think it's been done well enough yet. And, and whenever I walk around trade shows, I, I tend to see examples of the same thing that's already been done. Um, you know, and, it, and it's a little bit disappointing that that's really, is that as far as we've got in four, five, six, seven years that largely speaking is, oh, we can do this now. And, it, and it's, you know, it's, it's iteration when it needs to be evolution. Um, and, and that's the bit that, that sort of disappoints me a little bit when you're dealing with some seriously clever people that that is not the question. The people are not the question. It's the behavior that's the question. Getting out of that cycle. It's got to be pretty tough. I mean, because it's it's always been a craftsman industry. I mean, most of the develop most of the people that are owning print companies grew up in a print company and came up and learned how to run certain presses. And it's a very it's a very manufacturing based thought process, craft and manufacturing and to get them to think differently is it's hard and it and it's scary for them but what is the purpose of manufacturing what's the what's the sole purpose of manufacturing to produce something for someone correct so the most important person in that is the someone right you know the, the, there's a joke that i heard not that long ago um about the, the 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 writing on the back of the of the of the, the stern i guess of the titanic when it when it sank um, and the question was always asked, why did they make it, make the ship out of iron? Um, you know, so that it sunk so quickly. Um, and on the writing, as the boat disappeared under the water and it said SS Titanic, that's the way we've always done it. That seems right. You know, it's interesting. You mentioned the automotive industry and I feel like it has lots of parallels with the print industry, not just what Chris said about sort of this mechanical thinking and this craftsmanship, but also there's like a nostalgia to it. Like maybe the older the industry, sort of the harder it is to break mental ties. You know, I, I don't think they're probably having this conversation in the cryptocurrency industry or, or like, you know, some sort of like healthcare technology. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, one of the cool things about you is that you're, you, have an, you have enough sort of fresh eyes from the fresh perspective to kind of see things from that zoomed out perspective. Do you think there's anything to that? Do you think there's anything to the idea that, you know, Gutenberg was around for this thing and it's hard to it's hard to change when the runway has been so long? Yeah, but but what, what you're talking, you're right, of course, but what you're talking about and is not what I'm advocating. What I'm what I'm not advocating is wholesale change. What I'm advocating is turning the dial so that it continues to evolve, because, you know, if you're not careful, if you keep doing the same things the same way, what you have is an elegant death. And, and, you know, and nobody will really notice that the body is, is, is dying. 
um, because at, at every given point, it still shows signs of life. So, you know, but but that's largely what you're creating with these legacy industries. And I'm not just talking about print here, but automotive um, computing to a certain extent. I mean, when was the last time you bought anything from IBM? Uh, you know, so we, we we look at the evolution. Microsoft for a long time went through a lull in its development ability. Nobody was interested. It was all a bit old fashioned, uh, <laughs> which is ridiculous when you consider how young the company is. Even Apple now are the are the um, uh, the institution. Uh, you know, and, and and everybody's trying to nip around them and what have you. So, you know, we we are as a species destined to evolve. Um, and the industries that have come through those years, as old as they are, need to go with that someone that's going to buy something from that someone that's made it, because that's where the evolution truly is. But it's not going to change from black to white in one day. It's not going to change from top to bottom in one day. But my point is, as I sit and watch, and I am a voyeur of the print industry rather than a participant, is if you're not careful, then this will happen and you won't have noticed. And and that's that's always going to be the biggest shame is if, you know, there won't, I'm fairly hopeful, Darren, there won't be a day where they go, well, that's it. No more print. You know, it's, you know, it's a, we're all done. We've run out of paper. We've got no ink left. So let's, let's just call it a day. You know, that, that hopefully. Now, um, who do you see succeeding? Cause I, I see some, some things that uh, printers are doing. They're almost adding research and development. So like they're trying, you know, they're adding, you know, idea labs or printing labs, and they seem to be investing in what could be, you know, and, and showing that thinking to prospects and to clients. Um, do you see the same thing? Yeah. I mean, uh, and, and really that where that's coming from, Chris, are the, what I'll call the medium old companies. Um, so the relatively relatively new ones that's probably a better adjective that that owners founders and and directors and what have you are bringing in the next generation possibly their own children or, or certainly of their own children's age into the industry who are coming in and going oh you need this you need a co-working space you need you know you, you need the, all all of the things that university and college kids have, have, have now been educated in our problem is the people of today didn't realize that when it was their youth so there's a catch-up game to be played with probably the next generation, their children, um, you know, that, are, that have graduated or are coming into the family business. But they're coming in with, nah, dad, you've got it all wrong. You don't need that anymore. You know, how many times do sons tell fathers where they went wrong? And how many times do fathers go, yeah, well, when it's your turn, sunshine, you know, you, you can do as you like. Well, it largely is their turn if we're wanting to embrace what that someone wants, because that someone is their child. Um, and so letting them be part of the evolution and the revolution of how print companies, the bright ones, the, the, the forward thinking ones, develop their businesses. Um, you know, there's several in the UK. You walk in now and, they've, and as you say, they've got R&D centers. They're, they're not just a print shop. They're a, they're a technical business. They're a technology business. They're a web business. There are, there are lots of things. But again, why, why aren't they doing this? Why, why are the vast majority not? doing it i mean that that points unfortunately to a, a a lack of understanding of the of the of the scale of the problem if they don't because it's okay look we, we didn't we did nearly as much last year as we did the year before that's okay you know there's there's always reasons well there's a recession well there's a pandemic well there's a it doesn't matter uh because as i said before what i'm not talking about is wholesale change it's graduated change and, and you can try these things. You know, I mean, I say this a million times a, a day almost. The only way to find out is to find out. And, and, you know, if these businesses are successful and solid and what have you, they have the scope and the wisdom and the wealth to find out without really risking the farm. Um, but if you don't do that and if you don't poke the wasp's nest, how on earth are you going to find out? And I can remember screaming at the television a couple of years ago, Chris, which is showing my age now because I'm shouting at the news. And, and there was a um, there was a store manager of a of a local. There's a, a, a there was a chain of stores in the UK called British Home Stores, very old, very traditional retailer. They were on every high street in the UK, and they went bankrupt. Um, and the interview on the TV was with the store manager of the local store here, and she said, "Well, I don't know how it how it's come to this," and I was screaming, "And that's why you've closed, because if you don't know how it's come to this, it was your fault." <laughs> So, you know, you can't, you can't, 
the businesses that are struggling and that are going under and, and, and what have you have only largely themselves to blame that they didn't look at why and do something about it. Yeah, I, in a few conversations I've had, a few different people over the last couple of weeks, it's pretty funny. I talked to somebody who is much older, a, bit, a veteran of the industry, who had such a nimble mind and was some of the anecdotes that he had about building several businesses and changing business models along the course of his career. He picked, he picked up the phone and started calling end to end users, like people who are using products that were printed for customers and did his own market research, realized something that even his customers didn't know and came up with a whole new business model and cornered a big part of the market. And then I, I talked to some other people that they're like, boy, I, I, I wish I could get more into um, education. It's really down this year, which yes, it's down. And I, and I said, well, what are, what, what are prospective students needing these days? You know, he, he didn't, he didn't, he, they don't see past what's being asked. I need a, I need a education packet to send out in September. Okay. Why? You know, they're, they're not asking, like, they're not going to the source. They're not adding value. They're just, they're not, to, not to say they're order takers. They're trying to do certain things. Oh, let's add embellishments or things like that. But they're also not necessarily di that, that R and D that I kind of mentioned, they're not going all the way to their customer's customer and kind of understanding them in a, in a deeper way. But then I see, some, you know, I see this other person mad, madly successful because he dug deeper. Well, that's the, that's the point, isn't it really? That you, you never lose your capability. You just lose your willingness. Um, and, and, you know, so the, the, the guy that you're, you're quoting, it doesn't matter what age you are. If you've got a good idea, it's a good idea. Um, you know, the, the, the typically what happens and business owners, across all sectors are, are, um, are absolute victims of this, is being a business owner does not make you good at everything. In fact, it, it very rarely makes you good at most things other than the willingness to set up a business. And then what you should do is bring bright people in that, that help that business grow. In fact, the best business model is that you shouldn't really be working at all and everybody else should be, should be working for you. Somehow, when you get owners and founders and multi-generational owners and founders of business, they believe that they have all the skills because look at me, look, look, I must be clever, look how much money I've got. And that doesn't necessarily compute. So the guys that are struggling to think about whether they've asked their customers what they actually want are the ones that don't even know that they need to. And, and, and they haven't employed somebody to go, hey, boss, shouldn't we be down on the campus today just asking a few questions and, and just running some ideas about and see what people think? Here's some stuff, guys. Break it. Tell us what's wrong with it. Tell us what you like. Tell us what you need. Do you remember when, uh, you know, and I th it may have been Phoenix, Chris, that, that there was a, I think they did a college day with the Arizona State and brought in, and Clemson, and they brought in some students from the college, and we had an open q and I, I got thrown in at the last minute to moderate it. It was hilarious. Um, and, you know, the questions that they were asking, um, you know, were just so wonderfully searching of the industry. And you could see these guys going, wow, I hadn't thought of that. Wow, I hadn't thought of that. And in the end, I stood there and went, uh, excuse me, print industry, meet the future, future, meet the print industry. Um, and then probably got, you know, kicked off stage for being rude. Um, but, but that's the, it's that disconnect, isn't it? Um, you, know, you don't have to be good at everything. You just have to know the people that are. As a voyeur, as a voyeur of the print industry, which is, which is creepy sounding, but you're the voyeur as you've self, self titled. Um, what, what do you see, what do you see as some trends? What do you see as some, what's, is there a next big thing that you see? That's a really good question, Chris, actually, because I, I think, you know, as we've all hibernated for the last 15 months and, and retrenched somewhat into the safety of our own world, our needs as consumers have actually become an awful lot less than we imagined. But what they have become is completely clear. Um, and that in itself is, is a great position to be in, but also a very risky one for companies that are waiting for the world to come back to normal, whatever that means, um, because they knew what that looked like. You know, they, they could manage that. It was busy, but they could manage it. We're about to emerge or are emerging into a, into a whole new 
period of time that, that you know, when, because well, Chris and I are going to live to about 160, Darren, that's, that's our plan um, by healthy living and, and um, you know, uh, clean living and, and all that kind of stuff. And we're going to look back on this period of time, which will be studied in history as in the same way that, that you know, the raw, I was listening to a piece on the radio last night about the roaring 20s, the 1920s, which was the bounce back from Spanish flu and the First World War and all that kind of stuff. And of course, when you're living in that, you don't notice it because you're living in it. You only need to put in hindsight. I actually think this period that's coming up, Chris, is possibly going to be the catalyst for the need for that reinvention of the print industry because people will be coming out going, I don't need that anymore. I need this. You make me this and I'll buy it. Um, and I, and honestly, I'm not a soothsayer, as you well know. Um, but what I do recognize is that everything has changed and largely speaking, most people now have, have, have recognized what they actually need. So the, the successful companies in the print industry will be the one that can bend to that need rather than waiting to supply a need that is no longer there. So that doesn't really answer your question, but it, it sets out, I think, the landscape of the, of the problem, but also proving, if we come back full circle, the need to change because everything else has. Excellent. Well, thank you for today. Thank you for, for giving, giving us your afternoon. Thanks, guys. Stay safe. Thank you.